more mechanics yet for you guys. In this case, it comes in the form of a nine mark question, statics of rigid bodies. Students hate statics of rigid bodies. I love statics of rigid bodies. So I'm gonna have some fun with this one. So it says it wouldn't plank A, B. Of course, their essay was a lot longer. I've just kind of summarized what they were saying, innit? A wooden plank AB of mass 4M, length 4A, lies on a rough ground at A and has a small stone mass M attached at B. The plank rests on a small or on just a smooth peg at C. The plank is in equilibrium and makes an angle alpha to the horizontal where 10 alpha is uh, 3 over 4. The coefficient of friction is mu. The plank is uniform. Show that this inequality is true. All right, so... Let's just go read again and start labeling. A wooden plank AB of mass 4M, uh, and it did say it was uniform, so that's gonna be right down the middle. So we're gonna put 4MG. Now, right down the middle means we have 2A, so, you know, in the exam, they like to put this kind of nonsense on the diagram that you could have just labeled yourself. I'm just gonna get rid of that, put 2A. That means this is A if that's A. Uh, lies on rough ground, so it's lying on rough ground at A. Now, what does the, so we have to consider friction, right? Now, always just think about this practically. So this ladder or wooden plank, if everything was smooth, what would it want to do? It would want to slip that way, Steven Gerrard. Yeah, it would want to slip. But friction obviously exists, and it's going to stop a Stevie G situation happening. And it does that by opposing the movement of that ladder is going to point that way. Now, we have to really consider what's happening here. Are you going to put mu r, f, which is f max, or are you going to use f? In the question, it says equilibrium, which means friction is not necessarily at its maximum. It's just opposing whatever's opposing it. Yeah, it's not moving. Friction does not necessarily have to be at its maximum. We use f. And that's where this inequality is going to come from because we're going to consider at the end F is not necessarily at its maximum, but it could be, all right? That's where the inequality comes from. So whenever you see inequalities in these kind of questions, just remember it's to do with the fact that friction is not necessarily at its maximum. But obviously there is a reaction force here. I'm gonna call it a reaction at A. Draw long lines. The last thing is that this plank is resting on the peg. Resting on the peg means that there's a reaction force. Now because it's circular, this basically is a tangent at a single point. Friction would act along, but then the reaction force has to act perpendicular to the surface we're resting on. Now, that's going to be 90 degrees here. We're going to call that RC. Okay, that is going to be 90 degrees. And now we can do our moments uh, and up, down, left, right to figure out what our answer is. Now, because it is a plank, it has the ability to move up, down, left, right, but also it has the ability to rotate. When we did questions to a single particles, like in the last uh, question where I looked at the particles moving on a pulley, because they're particles, they're not subjected to rotational forces. However, these ones are. So we need to do moments and up, down, left, right. Which one's the most obvious thing to do first in this case? It's to take moments. Because if we do up, down, left, right, there's so many unknowns, we just can't do it. Where do you want to take moments from? Now, a lot of students might say, take moments about C to help us find F, because that's the goal. But by doing that, you actually have F unknown and RA unknown. It doesn't actually help us. Moments is an incredible thing, guys, because it allows us to remove forces from our diagram. If we take moments about A, we can ignore RA and F, because remember, a moment is force times perpendicular distance. So if these two forces go through A, their perpendicular distance is zero. So we can just ignore them, okay? So taking moments of our A, we can consider how the other forces are affecting our diagram. Now, one thing I've just missed out is that we do have this mass at B. Go draw a long line there. This mass is just M, so we're gonna put Mg. Now. 4mg is pointing down from A. That means it's a clockwise moment. And same with the mg, it's a clockwise moment. It's actually only RC that is an anti-clockwise moment. So we're going to write down the force, RC. 
times its perpendicular distance from a. But because we have this 90 degrees, it's already at its shortest distance. So we have 2a plus a, which is 3a. Equals 4mg times its shortest distance from a. Now 4mg is vertical, so its shortest distance is horizontal. Yeah, so what is that distance? Well, it's a right-angled triangle, simple Sokotoa. The hypotenuse, cos. Now remember, they told us in the question this was alpha, right? So cos alpha, they said that the angle alpha to the horizontal. So 2a cos alpha. Plus mg times a very similar distance. It's just the hypotenuse is 4a cos alpha. Right, the a's cancel. We have 3rc is 4 times 2, 8, plus 4, 12, mg cos alpha. Divide by 3, rc is 4 mg times cos alpha. And we can work that out from tan alpha being 3 over 4. Tan is opposite, adjacent, so 5. So cos will be 4 fifths. So RC is 16 fifths mg. Uh, that's not an answer, that is just a part of our working. Now we have to do up, down, left, right, okay? Up, down, left, uh, well, right, there's no left. It's not looking good because the RC is not pointing up, down, left, right. So we need to resolve that force so that it is. Now RC pointing this way is going to point to the left and up. We're missing an angle though, very simple. Alpha is always equal to that top angle. Why is that? I'll show you once. We have the Z angles, so the alternate angles. This here is alpha. There is 90, so this here is 90 minus alpha. This is 90, so that makes this alpha. Okay, now we can resolve. This is the adjacent side, yeah, between alpha and the right angle. So it's gonna be RC cos alpha, and this one here is RC sine alpha. Now, left and right is the easier one to write down because there's less going on, but F depends on RA, so let's do up, down first. RA and RC cos alpha equals 5mg. The downward forces. Let's tick everything off as we use them. So from here we can work out what RA is. RA is 5mg. Subtract RC, which is 16 over 5 mg times cos alpha, which was 4 fifths. So from there we've got, what is that? 125 minus 64. 125 minus 64 is what? 36 plus 25, 36 plus 25, like 51. I don't even think that's right. 36 plus 25, 61. Bruh. 5 minus 16 over 5 times 4 fifths. Ah. Say Nelly. Alright, so now we have the left and the right. F is RC sine alpha. F is RC times sine alpha, which is 48 over 25 mg. Now, we can consider F not necessarily being at its maximum because we're in equilibrium. In equilibrium, F could be equal to F max if it's limiting equilibrium. But generic equilibrium means it's less than or equal to F max. Yeah, it could be smaller. So then we're going to say friction is less than or equal to mu r. Now, which r is it specifically? Is it ra or rc? Well, f is to do with the contact force at a, so it's ra. f was 48 over 25 mg. 
less than or equal to mu times Ra, which was 61 over 25 mg. The 25s cancel, the mg's cancel. Then we divide by 61 and we get our answer. Absolutely beautiful, Jeff. And there is our answer. So guys, it turns out to be a very nice question. If you learned something today, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more mass content. If you're interested in my A-level mass courses, more details in the description, and feel free to join the Loon Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions and get feedback from the community. I'll see you in the next video. Nice.